The highlighter pen was invented in the 1960s simply to get your attention. When text is shaded with transparent vivid inks in hot pinks or warm yellows, our eye goes directly to it. Marketers have always known that color has impact and it's a principle highlighted by these pens. Shades of neon. When it comes to highlighter pens, drab colors are a write-off. This is how a highlighter pen gets its start. A vacuum siphons plastic pellets into this container. The red ones will tint the whole mix as it melts inside a heating tube. A mechanized steel screw pushes the melted plastic into pen molds. The force applied is equal to the weight of 350 elephants. Cooled by water, the newly molded pen barrels spill into a container below. Now, some clear colored pen barrels drop onto a conveyor track. And ink reservoirs that look like pieces of chalk, but are made of polyester, drop down a shaft and a robotic arm thrusts them into the plastic barrels. The back end plug goes in the same way. The plugs fall to a robotic arm and it pushes them into the back of the pen. Now a chemist drops a concentrate of dye into a beaker of water. Just 10 grams or drops is enough to turn it fire engine red. A humectant already in the water will keep the ink from drying out when it's in the pen. Next he measures the ink's thickness. He lowers a steel probe into it and the probe turns. A gauge measures the speed. If the probe turns too fast, it means the ink is too thin. If it revolves too slowly, then the mix is too thick. At four revolutions per minute, the ink is just the right consistency. A vacuum pump sucks the ink into six-inch steel needles, and a robotic arm pushes the needles into the polyester reservoirs, injecting them with ink. Now we get to the nib of the assembly. A combination of mechanical vibrations and compressed air drive a conveyor belt carrying the pen nibs. The nibs fall into the clutch of a mechanical claw, which drops them to a circular pusher. It shoves the nibs onto the pens and they interlock. The impact floods the reservoir inside the pen with ink. Now it's time to top it all off. A conveyor transports caps to a mechanical gripper and the gripper slides them over the nibs. Over on another assembly line, they're making a 3-in-1 marker. A conveyor bowl funnels smaller ink reservoirs into a shaft and they drop to a robotic arm. The arm stuffs the reservoirs into the small barrels. And then a needle injects them with ink, quickly saturating the reservoirs with vibrant color. The next robotic arm shoves a receptacle onto the barrel. And then another robot presses a polyester nib onto it. A robot now slips a hood-like cap over the nib. Another mechanical arm suctions up the fuchsia-colored mini markers and transfers them to a triangular case. Down the line, another suctioning arm picks up a red mini marker and deposits it in the triangle. A steel probe presses it in. Finally, a yellow-colored marker completes the triangle. Now a robot uses an electrical charge to pick up metallic confetti. When the charge is turned off, the confetti drops into the triangle, adding some glitter. Next, a suctioning robot drops the top part of the triangle onto the lower case, and a metal cylinder presses it shut. Another suctioning arm carries the three-in-one marker to a conveyor belt, which unloads it into a box. This 3-in-1 highlighter makes it easier to color code text, a different color for each theme. Now, an electrical conveyor moves the highlighters to a mechanical arm. The arm flips it around, positioning it for the next step. A squeegee silk screens a logo onto it. I wonder how they came up with that one. Now the highlighters enter an ultraviolet light chamber. The light bonds the ink to the case. And finally, the ultimate test. Plastic grippers guide markers as they make circles. 
700 to 1,000 circles means this particular production line will definitely stand out. 